Hello and welcome my art loving friends. In today's video it is far past time I give you an update on the Himi Mia Use It Up Challenge. That is where we are trying to use up this entire palette and see how long it takes, how many paintings we have to do, so how many square inches and how many hours it will actually take to use up 18 wells of paint. In addition to that, I will also show you some of the paintings we've done in my watercolor classes that I teach at the college. Granted, it's just some of them, but it's still really fun to see. Stay tuned. As far as the Himi Mia Use It Up Challenge, we started this experiment in December of 2020. It was December 8th, 2020. I think that was the first painting, or at least the first one I tracked using these paints. And you can see exactly how much is left. And I have used these a lot, and we'll get to the spreadsheet at the end of the video that I'll show you all the math and all the square inches and all the hours and how many paintings we've done. I use this a lot, like exclusively almost in my intermediate watercolor class, and there's still so much paint left. And it was so funny because when I was using it, I was thinking, yeah, I'm finally getting low on paint. And then I come back and look at it, I'm like, not really. Okay, yes, maybe the black and the white. Who knew? that I would use black and white the fastest. What is going on with that? Apparently, I really enjoy mixing my colors with black and white, and I don't think I would have known that if not for this experiment. Some of the other colors that are getting really low are the dark browns, well, the dark brown and the burnt sienna, and this blue, which is basically the ultramarine blue in this set. I use a lot of light yellow also, but the rest are still very full. So I may be dead before we can use all these up, but we're going to do our best because World Watercolor Month is coming up and that is another challenge that I take advantage of painting every day and try and use just this palette for that. So whew, we'll see. All right, so this entire sketchbook, and this is the one that I did the video about not being watercolor paper. I'll link that in the corner for you. So I did every single thing in here, as far as I remember, with the Himi Mia watercolor paint. So that was a lot of square inches, a lot of time, a lot of paintings with just that palette on horrible paper, by the way. <laughs> but I still, I still did it. Anyway, I remembered after I put this video out, like a week after that, I'm like, wait a minute, I finished a sketchbook before my Inktober sketchbooks, but this is the first, I guess, watercolor sketchbook that wasn't just Inktober. All right, so let me show you some of the things in my Etcher sketchbook that I've done with the Himimia watercolors. So I did these faces with that, and this was during the sketchbook revival. And this was all with the Himimia. Himimia. So this is stuff you've kind of seen on the channel, but I never specifically, at least if I specifically said it was Himimia, I didn't remember. So these two were both with Himimia. This is stuff we did in watercolor class where I was showing them how to do more loose florals and for these beautiful centers of these flowers, aren't they just gorgeous? And we use brusho in the center for that beautiful diffused effect. So this was not painted in with a brush. It was sprinkled in with brusho. Anyway, I'll show that to you eventually on the channel. So this here was also with Himimia watercolors and brusho but Himimia was the base for all of that. So that's stuff we did in class. This is stuff you've seen. Here are more of those loose florals we did in class and anything that's like real paint is with the Himimia watercolors and the rest of those strange effects are brusho, strange, awesome, cool effects. Same thing here, this is the Himimia watercolors. We use salt in this case to get some fun effects. So that was done in class. More loose florals here, look at that. The center of that is so pretty. More loose florals because I had to demonstrate this in I think three different classes. So we got lots of practice and I actually love this one. It's so pretty. Well, I think it's pretty. <laughs> and so that base was all done with Himimio watercolors. This was the intermediate watercolor class I taught. And so this entire mug painting was done with Himimio watercolors. <laughs> Same with this one. Himimia watercolors. So we, we're trying, we're trying to use them up, right? <laughs> it's just not working. This is actually on glitter paper. I think I've showed this to you guys on my community page or maybe just Instagram, I can't remember. This was painted with Himimia watercolors. <laughs> I've been trying, you guys, I've been trying to use them up. Switching over to oil painting class. We did way more paint. Oh wait, there's one more watercolor. 
This little watercolor was done with Himimiya watercolors. <laughs> this was teaching them clouds, basically. And there are some more paintings. They must still be on boards, maybe not completed yet. I do have a bunch of incomplete paintings that I need to do, and I would like to do that with you guys on this channel. So we'll see how that works, but lots of painting with Himimiya. Switching now to the oil painting class. This is not all of the paintings. I have at least one or two still at the college drying, but we did these little birds, and these are supposed to be like one stroke paintings where you put the stroke down and then you don't touch it again. So you can go over your painting, you know, more than once, because like this flower takes at least six strokes, but you do the stroke and then you leave it anyway. So we did a bunch of little birds like this, and this was so cute. And I know I have another bird somewhere, but I don't know where it is. So the same mugs that I showed you in watercolor class, we actually did here in oil painting class, so same idea. We actually did it in oil painting class first, and then I'm like, hey, that would be super fun in watercolor class, so these are watercolor, that's oil. My husband really liked this one. I also like it. And then we did the exercise where we had to paint just using palette knives, only palette knives. That was the, the goal anyway, and so this was mine. And I don't think I got pictures of any of my students' work. If I did, I don't know where they are. I just switched phones a couple, like a month or so ago, and this kind of made a mess of my brain, figuring out where photos and videos are that I need, but I'll figure it out eventually. But I really like this one, palette knife only. <laughs> Something that was super fun about doing this was when you're using a palette knife with oil paints, all you have to do is take your paper towel and clean your palette knife off, and that's it. There's no cleanup. <laughs> and I just basically grabbed the tube of paint and I don't have a palette knife handy, but pretend this is a palette knife. Or pretend, here, pretend this is a palette knife. So basically I grabbed my tube of paint, opened it up, and would just take paint right off the tube and put it on. And once in a while I had a little palette off the side where I mixed some paint to get a different color, but the cleanup was just like, boop, I'm done. No turpentine, no odorless mineral spirits, nothing like that. Super clean and easy. So I left this one on the board. I had it on to dry, but it can be taken off now. Anyway, it's just on canvas paper and I love it. All right, let's take a look at the spreadsheet and I will show you how many paintings we've done, at least as far as I can remember keeping track of these paintings because I'm sure there's some that I am going to miss because I did that like two semesters of intermediate watercolor class using this palette, and I may have missed a couple of paintings, but I'm doing my best to keep good track of it, and we will weigh this and see how we are in grams. I know that's kind of a big measurement for this, but it is kind of working, so I'll go get the kitchen scale and show you the spreadsheet right now. Here's the kitchen scale. Let's turn it on, put it to grams. There we are. It's so cute. Stick it on there and see what it says. I'm so curious. 103. Oh my gosh. Oh shoot, you can't see it if I lift it like that. Yeah, if I lift it, it messes it up. Can you see the light? 103, 103 grams. That's significant actually. So let me bring up the spreadsheet and show you why. All right, here is the spreadsheet. So we started at 113 grams here. You can see that. And I only measured it occasionally and We'll put the date today. What is today? The 13th? 613, 22. We'll just put the measurement of 103 grams. So we have gone from the first time I measured it, which was after a couple of paintings, down so 113 grams to 103 grams. Now there's this big gap here because I taught two classes in between here and I can't I can't imagine that I didn't use the Himamiya paint at all during this time. So I need to go back through all my old videos and all of that and kind of catch up. So the totals so far might be a little bit off because there are things that I've missed. Now, since April 5th, I believe I have not hardly used it because I have only taught a beginner watercolor class and I used the Daniel Smith split primary set in that class. So it doesn't really give me time to use the Himimiya one. And we've been distracted by all those art hauls that I've had recently trying to use up all the fun supplies I've received in that. So not a big chance to use that. But I do believe there are a bunch more paintings in this section here 
that I just don't have yet. So anyway, if we look at the square inches so far, just based on this, this will give you a good idea though of how much time and energy we've gone <laughs> into this project so far because it's a lot. All right, so 1934 square inches. The time thing did not add up correctly. Sometimes in Excel, the time thing does not add up correctly because you have to have the information in all of these cells in just the right formatting. But anyway, the Doodle Wash March Challenge, you can see there was 28 hours of painting just in that challenge alone. Plus we have hour and a half, hour and a half, hour and a half, six hours, hour, almost two hours, hour, two and a half hours. So these two add up to an hour and 15 minutes, another hour, another hour, another hour, two more hours, another half hour. So lots and lots of hours of painting, plus I know those things that I told you I'm missing out of here. So I am curious how much the palette weighs all by itself, so eventually, someday, we are going to find out. <laughs> I'm gonna take this Himi Mia set with me when I leave this week uh, to the lake, so I'll be painting with it again. And one of my sketchbooks, I haven't decided which sketchbook I'm bringing yet. Well, shoot guys, I apologize that there are things missing, but I'll get that updated. I just, I need some more time. I have had a crazy schedule. Plus, you know, getting the virus kind of slowed me down. I was really energetic the first week and completely dead the next week. So I'm, I'm feeling uh, quite behind. But at least you get to see the palette and see the spreadsheet so far. And I'll give you another update probably after World Watercolor Month. So probably the beginning of August. So do tell me in the comments below if you thought the black and white would be the first colors to go because that was quite a shocker for me. All right, I've already mentioned that, but still, I wanna know what you think. How long do you think this is actually going to take me? <laughs> this is crazy. I may have to like just pick a color and do like a hundred monochromatic paintings. I have no idea. I was hoping to wait till that step to see till I started running out of like the core colors and then having to do that, but they're just lasting forever. But maybe this World Watercolor Month will help and the trip this week and weekend, I don't know, we'll see. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. And if you're new, subscribe down below. We do a lot of fun watercolor stuff on this channel. Plus we get distracted by other art supplies once in a blue moon. And I think that's fun. All right guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. I need to change my lighting situation. Hang on. Now I lost my diffuser cover thingy. Oh, now I pulled it out of the thingy and the thingy and now it's gonna fall and crash everywhere. Ah, oh, I did it again. Okay, okay, all right. Let's just, let's just leave that alone. Here are more of those loose foil, flo and then we did a painting session. Well, at least I think so. Off. Oh, that was easier today than it was when I used it in the kitchen the other day. Oh, this is dirty and dusty. Ooh. <laughs> Ding dong. Well, hi, my sweet Wilma. I love you. I love you. Jack. Jack. What is wrong with her? She's got issues today. She wants to run and play.